Welcome to my channel Singing Tips. I'm Lois Johnston and I'm a professional opera singer and I've been teaching and coaching singers for over 25 years. Today I'm really excited to be bringing you one of the most famous operatic um, areas of the whole repertoire. It's O Mio Babino Caro by Puccini and I've chosen it especially because it's suitable for beginner students and for more advanced students. It's, um, it's a, a simple aria in structure and yes it does require a solid technique but it's one that everybody can have a go at. Now I've created this seven step tutorial so it goes stepwise in stages um, adding in more technical information as we go along and be sure to complete all seven steps because I'll also be revealing my top singing tip towards the end. Step one is always do your research and know what your opera and your aria are about. So the synopsis of Gianni Skiki in a nutshell is there's an old man who's just died, the family around the bed squabbling about what they're going to do with the enormous fortune that they believe is coming their way. However, the old man has left all the money to the monastery. Um, so the family are furious and they decide that they need to call on special measures so they get local conman Gianni Skiki in and he comes up with a scheme to make sure that they get some money or so they believe Gianni Skiki actually has a sub plan which is to um, ensure that he gets all the money so what he does is he calls in a notary because the death hasn't been notified at this point, calls in a notary and he gets into the bed and pretends to be the dying old man and with his last breathing words um, changes the will um, and leaves all the money to himself and the family can't do anything about it because um, the, the notary is there now and it's all a legal process. So they are even more furious. Lauretta, who's our main character, um, is singing to her father, O Mio Babino Caro, partly because she does want to marry Rinuccio, who is one of the nephews, the old man's nephew, the dead old man. Um, she really does want to marry Rinuccio, she really does love him, but she really wants um, at this point Gianni Schicchi to help the family because she thinks that um, Rinuccio will be even more lovely with pots of money in his pockets. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree with Lauretta. She seems like a very sweet innocent girl in this area but she isn't quite as sweet and innocent as she's leading us to believe and she absolutely uses every tool in her tool toolbox to um, pull on her father's heartstrings. So step one, know your, your aria, know your story, know the emotions involved, the emotional um, palette of colours that you're going to need to draw on to sing the aria. Watch lots of singers um, and pick your favourite components, the things that you enjoy the most about performances when you watch them and um, be, be working towards incorporating some of those ideas into your own performance. So that is stage one, do your research. Step two is our translation and um, pronunciation of our text. So straight into it, O mio babino caro. So um, a nice big m of mio and the e sound is the one that we emphasize. O mio babino caro. Double B so that means you linger on the double B slightly more. Babino caro. Caro, um, the first syllable is the emphasized one there. Then we have a comma, so you're going to take a breath there. Next phrase, mi piace e bello bello. So mi piace, um, pia is the um, syllable that you need to emphasize there. Piace, che, open, and then e bello bello. So there are two e sounds and they're slightly different. Mi piace e bello bello. And the double l's in bello bello just need lingering on a little bit. V oh, and there is a breath there because there's punctuation. Next phrase is vo andare in porta rossa. So vo an elided together because you've got to fit those two syllables on one quaver. Vo andare in 
rein, again, you elide them together because you've got to fit them onto one quaver. Porta rossa. Um, a comprarla nello will go on in a second. So, vo andare in porta rossa, breath. A comprarla nello. A comprarla nello. Again, you've got the double L there, nello. So, you linger on the, um, the L's and ne is the dominant um, syllable in there. It's not nello, but nello. Um, a comprar l'anello. Exclamation mark. So you've got a breath there. Si, si, ci voglio andare. Si, comma, si. So it's good to just have a little lift between those two um, yes, yeses. Si, si. Ci voglio andare. Um, voglio andare. So voglio andare, lio and an elide together because again you've got that wonderful thing where you now have three vowel sounds all to sing on one quaver. Io a, voglio andare. Um, voglio is emphasized, vo, lio andare. So your important syllables are vo, voglio andare. Exclamation mark, so you've got to take a breath there. Esse la massindarno. So e se, they're closed vowels, so not esse. E se la massindarno. And that's a nice opportunity to roll that a ah there, darno. Um, esse la massindarno. Mas is the um, emphasized syllable in the middle of there. Comma, you can take a breath. Andrei sul ponte vecchio. Andrei, so dre is the um, emphasized one. Andrei sul ponte vecchio. Ponte vecchio. So ve. Kyo. Um, it's important that the kyo goes on the second note, but we'll cover that when we cover the more technical side of um, fitting the pronunciation in and doing it with a, a nice vocal technique. Um, take a breath. Next phrase. Ma per buttarminarno. Ma per. Um, again, that's a closed one, so it's not per, but per. Ma per, roll da, buttar, double T, so you just have to stop the airflow slightly. Buttar, roll da, min arno, mi in becomes elided together, so min arno, roll da there. Um, coming on to our third section, mi strugo e mi tormento, so mi strugo e, Goe, elided. Mistru, and the U is the emphasized part. Mistru, goe, mi tormento. Men of mento is the emphasized syllable. Odio, odio. Um, the D is really important there. Odio. Vorrei morir. So, vorrei. Vorrei morir. So the first R in morir, um, I wouldn't roll the first one just because um, it's a little bit fiddly to roll that one and the one at the end. It's much better to roll the last one and just um, gloss over the first one. Morir with the big rolled R at the very end. And then the final pleading section, babbo pietà, babbo. Again, it's a double B, so we really need to hear that there's a little bit of lingering on there. Babbo pietà, pietà, babbo pietà, pietà. So that's our whole pronunciation with most of the breaths in. Translation-wise, um, it has three sections, so o 
Mio Babino Caro is is as the title of the aria translates as it usually is translated as Oh, mio, oh, oh my beloved father. And that's basically what it is. Oh mio babino caro, oh my dear um, father. Babino is a, a sort of colloquial um, term of endearment for your father. So she's already getting in those um, little, um, she's, she's trying her hardest to just set the scene and butter him up, if you like, by calling him Babino straight away. Um, Mi piace e bello bello. I love him. She's talking about Rinuccio. Um, and he is beautiful or handsome. Vo andare in Porta Rossa. Um, I want to go to Porta Rossa to buy the ring. Porta Rossa was um, an area um, where it's set in Florence, where the gold quarter was and where you would go to buy jewellery particularly. So she's talking about going to buy the wedding ring in Porta Rossa. Um, a comprar l'anello is yes to, to buy the ring. Si, si, ci voglio andare. Yes, yes, I want to go there. Um, presumably she's feeling a little bit of resistance already. So she's, she's, um, reiterating what she wants to do. Yes. Yes. I want to go there. Esse la masindarno. Um, if I loved him in vain. So it, I think she's saying, um, if, if, if he wasn't worth my love, um, then I would go to Ponte Vecchio, Andrei sul Ponte Vecchio to the old bridge, um, ma per buttarmi in arno and throw myself in the river. So she's using all the tricks here to um, get Gianni Skiki to do what she wants. She really is trying to manipulate him. So she's basically doing the whole teenage girl thing and saying, if you don't let me have my own way, I'm going to throw myself in the river. And then it goes on, mi strugo e mi tormento. I am anguished and tormented. Um, Oh, Dio vorrei morire. Oh, God, I'd want to die um, if I couldn't have my way, if if you won't let me marry this, this boy. Um, babo pietà, pietà. Have pity, Dad. Um, have pity, babo pietà. When you're um, learning an opera in a foreign language um, that isn't your original language, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to um, get some help with pronunciation. Um, I'm lucky that I've been able to work with some amazing language coaches over the years, um, but there are some phenomenal resources on YouTube and I've um, included a link which you'll be able to access to um, get some help from a native speaker who goes into great detail about the language um, and where to put the stresses and which hours to roll and not roll and all those kinds of things um, that are really, really helpful and just totally take your pronunciation and your performance up to the next level. So please check out the link for pronunciation. Step three. Make sure you're fully warmed up. Um, you'll find a link here where you can do my 10 minute warm up, which is the bare minimum. It's basically some consonant activation, some vowel activation, some breath flow work, um, exercising your full range because this is this song's got quite a big range. Um, so that is the bare minimum 10 minutes exercise. Um, but what I suggest is that you watch this video all the way through um, and then you can save it and you can come back and work through the stages once you've done that 10 minute warm up. So get fully warmed up if you're going to have a big thing. I'm going to do this in F today um, and that's simply because it's actually a soprano aria but I don't see why sopranos should have all the fun so I've chosen F which is a bit lower and again a bit more accessible for more people so you can have a crack at this if you're a mezzo and then of course if you are a true soprano and you find those high A flats actually really easy then of course you can transpose it up later on and sing it at speed but here we, we're going to just keep it a little bit lower and slower than um, Puccini um, wanted it. So he suggested quaver equals 120 beats per minute, which is actually really quite fast. It's in 6-8 and there are six quaver beats in a bar grouped into two groups of three. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But we're going to go a little bit slower for learning. Um, dynamically and mood. Um, so it's, it's 
piano, pianissimo piano to start with, O mio babino caro. Um, and then you've got a big crescendo in the mi piace, bello, bello section. And then vo andare in porta rossa a comperar l'anello is just quite quiet again. Um, no great building of dynamics or anything there. So that's our first section. Um, let's just sing through that first section. So that's all of that first section with the shapes in that you're going to want to work on. Um, how did you feel you went with that? Was there anything that you felt that you missed? Um, I'm just making the breaths a little bit more overemphasized so you can see where I'm taking them. You don't necessarily have to make them quite so loud. Let's just sing through section A again. Four, five, six. Oh, mio And then our next section, section B, si si ci voglio andare. You'll have noticed already that this area is all about um, the legato line, legato line, keeping it smooth and connected. So it's really, really um, important that you have really, really good breath support. So section um, B, let's just work through that section. So si si ci voglio andare So that's the bit where she's threatening to throw herself in the river. Um, how did you go with that section? Did you remember all of the things that you were trying to achieve? That lovely legato line and um, how's your pronunciation going? Maybe have another go through with me and focus on pronunciation this time. Um, CC, section B. Four. Five. Si, si, ci And then section three is a really impassioned section. Mi strugo e mi tormento. Mi strugo e mi tormento. So mi strugo e mi tormento is all building. I tried to give you that. And then the odio pianissimo there, which is what Pacini really, really wanted. So let's just go through that section again, really focusing on your legato line, pitching your consonants on the notes that they belong to. Mi strugo e mi got 
the whole bar to take a breath. And then the very last pleading section. Now this one's interesting because you've got a big crescendo and also a big pause at the very end. So you need to work out where you're going to breathe. And it's kind of, there are options, babo, pieta, pieta. There are two commas and three words. So you could breathe after each word. I prefer to breathe between the two pietas. Babo, pieta, pieta. And then the pause while the harp plays its lovely arpeggio there. And then finally, Babo, pieta, So a nice quiet finish it's back to piano again there as she really super 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 pleads with her father to get her own way so that's the whole aria through thinking about some of the things that you need to think about um, and we'll move on to some more technical detail so we've had a good look at it and a thing through and now we'll look at some really technical elements which will elevate your singing to the next level now this is the really impressive stuff so first of all what I would do with this area because it's all about legato singing I would actually have a sing through a couple of the phrases at least and just remove all of the consonants so I would actually just have a little sing through and just connect with the breath flow and the vowel so you would be doing oi, oi. So you're really working on singing through from one note to the next note, keeping the air flowing um, and without any consonants to get in the way and interrupt your airflow because it's all about just keeping that line moving forward. So when you've had a practice at a few phrases without any consonants at all, then you're going to put nice big consonants in pitched on the notes that they belong to. So you'll notice with the double L, so you have to work really hard to just try and resonate on the L or sing through it. And pitch it on the upper notes, an A flat in the um, original score. This is an F. Mi piace bello, bello. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a tickle. And um, and then that repeats again, bello. So again, you're just resonating slightly on the L, lingering on the L to get that um, double L sound. Again, it's just about the lovely, lovely stretchy legato flow. So really imagine, you know, a handwriting where the pen never comes off the page. It's all about keeping those vowels flowing into one another and not letting the consonants um, interfere with your airflow in a negative way. Um, that phrase is quiet. And then a comparar l'anello. Nell is the emphasized syllable there. Um, nice open vowels. A comparar la nello. Si, si, ci voglio andare. So if you said yes, yes, I want to go there in your own language. So yes, yes. I want to go there. I would break the yeses up. I wouldn't sing si, si, ci vol. It is all one phrase, but we need to mark those commas. Si, si, ci andare. And then go to the da of dare and dare. 
Si, si, ci voglio andare. So you don't need to breathe on those little commas. You need to breathe after nel lot and take a really good breath because you you need really good breath support for this whole area. Si, si, ci voglio andare. All in one breath, but just with those commas pointed to make the language come alive and make more sense and give you shape within the phrase. Next phrase. This one has a big hairpin on it. So, es la más no, is the shape we're going for. Es So you'll notice that no. So the high note, which is an A flat in the original score, where you jump up the octave, that shouldn't sound like it's the loudest note in the phrase. That would be really vulgar and quite ugly. Would be really not very nice. So you're going for no. So it's actually the note after the high note that's the loudest note. That's what we're aiming to achieve here. And then I think personally no portamento there. Portamento we were saying earlier is where you have the little slide, you carry the voice between the notes. Um, and I think there vecchio, I think it's because of the double C that it would just feel a little bit ugly to do vecchio. So now I'm gonna throw myself in the river. Ma per buttar mi narno. Ma per buttar mi narno. So again, it's just that super, super legato line. That might be one where you practice it without the consonants. just to make sure that your breath support is really, really working before you then try and put some consonants in. Now, huge breath. Mi strugo e mi tormento. You need to pitch the str on the upper note. And your diminuendo starts, again, it starts after the highest note. And that has um, an accent on it as well that Puccini intended. That's where your diminuendo happens. And then pianissimo. Now, I'm a bit naughty with this phrase. I quite often do a big showy offy messa di voce here, and it's not what Puccini intended at all, but I'm, I guess, a little bit of a show pony at times. Mesa di Voces, um, feel free, I've recorded lots of videos about some of these technical elements, so feel free to um, tap into those at the end when you've had a good sing through the whole thing. Um, even, even though Puccini didn't um, particularly want a Mesa di Voce there, if you want to do one, um, I can't really say don't because I would do it myself. So um, if I was doing it for an audition, I probably wouldn't. I would follow the score really, really carefully. But I think audiences kind of like a little bit of a, a bit of a showy, showy offy moment there. So I always do the Mesa di Voce there.
to die, important word. And then you've got a whole bar really to take the breath before the final Now, here, again, the high note isn't the loudest note in the phrase. The ta is actually just as loud as the pie. And with the pie, you need to pitch the pie sound, pie, on the upper note. And then you can do a diminuendo there just as it's marked in the, I think it's harp there, um, that does that lovely plinky plonky arpeggio. So, and there's a big pause there as well. So you can hold that for as long as you really want to, as long as it feels um, musical and um, representative of what the text means. And then your very final. So again, taking the breath after the babo pieta, pieta. So these technical things are all things these are the things that you need to practice into your muscle memory. So um, they're the things that you need to do on repeat to get them really, really working. So things like pitching the consonants on the notes, doing your um, dynamic diminuendos, um, messa di voce if you're doing them, um, just getting them all so practiced that you can do them without really thinking too hard about them. Um, so breaking your aria down into its component parts and practicing each technical thing until it feels really, really comfortable. Section six is all about the performance side of things. So let's say that you've nailed all of the technical things that you wanted to achieve. When you come to performing it, you have to bring a whole level of individuality and vocal color to the performance. And you'll find that through your emotional response to the text. So go back to the text, go back to figuring out who Lauretta really is, what her motivations are, how she feels about her father. So it's a cracking aria and often it's taken out of context. It can, it does just work as a standalone, it's the only standalone aria in the opera actually. And it does just work as um, literally what most people think it means, which is just the gorgeous, innocent young girl pleading with her father to marry the man she loves. Or you can add in all the extra layers of knowing what it's really about and the fact that she's actually really being quite manipulative. So you can do it in either of those two ways. It can just be face value, innocent young girl pleading with father, or it can be not quite such an innocent young girl pleading with father to get her own way. Um, so they're your options anyway with um, the colours that you're going to bring to this aria. So one of the things I always try to do is if I'm singing, um, if, if I'm singing this aria, um, I think about my own father and um, how much um, he was a great influence in my life and how much I loved him. And therefore, my um, the, the, when I think about my dad, the colour of my voice changes accordingly. So it doesn't have to be your dad. It can be anyone that you love or even your pet. It doesn't matter as long as you feel that connection when you're singing the aria. And that will bring out the colours in your voice that you need to bring Lauretta to life and... Um, you know, and the person that she's singing to. So it's just her and your father on the stage. Um, at this point, there's nobody else, no other distractions. So it really is um, just about her feelings and, and the changes in your vocal color as you go through the different emotions of the aria as it becomes more tempestuous. Um, and as she threatens to throw herself in the river, the color will become a little bit darker as you think those thoughts. So that's stage six. Practice, practice, practice. It's all about establishing habits and getting them um, embedded in your muscle memory, in your body and um, in your um, 
larynx. Um, so that when you perform the aria, you don't need to think about the technical things because you've embedded that already. You can focus fully on the emotional performance of the text and the music and respond to the music as you're making it. You can't do that unless you have um, loaded all of that other practice into your muscle memory. So that's why it's the three P's, practice, practice, practice. That's the most time consuming part. Um, but it really, really, really pays dividends. So how to practice. Um, I would break the aria up into sections. Obviously, you do your research. Um, start thinking about what the text means. Practice speaking the text. Here's the cat again. I haven't even sung this time. And she's popped back in again. Maybe she's looking for an encore or something. Um, so yes, just really... Um, it, Speaking the text to the rhythm is another good way of practicing. You can um, film yourself or sing in front of a mirror or both, ideally. You can just set the camera up to, um, even if it's just on your face, um, so that you can see your pronunciation of the text. Sometimes you notice a mispronunciation when you're watching what's happening with your mouth. So what we'll do is we'll go and do the final sing-along now. So there we are, that's the whole aria. The most important thing is don't rush the steps. Uh, it's really important just to keep referring back to particular technical things. So just keep, keep going back and then singing through the next bit and then go back a bit and then keep moving forward um, and you'll, you'll get there. Um, if you follow the steps and um, really commit to doing some hard practice, then you'll really notice a huge transformation in your singing and um, in the, the way you feel about your singing as well which is also really really important so please 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 if you've enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up um, just click the button because it um, just lets me know that I'm on the right track with what I'm offering and it gives me the opportunity to work on improving my content all the time I'm always happy to have a conversation with anybody online about singing so feel free to offer your feedback too I always like to hear what your thoughts are about a particular aria or discuss technique and that kind of thing um and that's it enjoy your singing that's the main thing have a great time with this aria it's fun to do bye